everybody. I'm Gopal Melkote. I'm happy to be joining this. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It is good evening for me. I'm in California. Okay, sir. <laughs> good morning, yes. <laughs> Dr. Melkote has joined us from California. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> that's He's nice. a great friend of Dubara. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very happy. Good morning, Mangala thank, Madam. Thank you, Bhatin. Good morning, Kokila. <coughs> so, we are live on the YouTube. I think we can... Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Ambali, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning everybody. I am Dr. Satish. I see a lot of, uh, you know, uh, in the audience who were not initially part of, uh, you know, Saturday Club morning meeting. It's because of Dr. Anand's popularity. It seems that so many people yeah. have joined. So I'll take a minute to introduce what is Saturday Club of Baroda. Uh, it is more than a 55 year old club whereby uh, no, Dr. Satish Sa, he is a urologist now in a geriatric age group, octogenarian. He and his colleagues, Dr. Vaisnav, Pramin, and others had started 55 years back where they used to meet physically in a place every Saturday, and the audience would be heterogeneous who is interested in knowing, no, uh, it's a hunger for knowledge sort of audience. So that was continued offline for many years, more than 50 years. And for last three and a half years, after Corona struck, I've been conducting this online every Saturday, uninterrupted. And we invite uh, speakers from various fields in medicine. And we also talk about you know, non-medical uh, uh, you know, aspects of our life also often. So this is the introduction of our Saturday club. And here we have Dr. Jagdish Patel. Let me say good morning. Good morning. Who is one of the founders and a, a very active member of Saturday Club of Baroda. So we, I welcome you all of you for this meeting. And in future also, I will uh, be happy to have you join us uh, in this Saturday Club morning meeting. Now to start with this meeting, we have Dr. Anand Ambali, a geriatric medicine expert from uh, Vijayapura. He is going to talk, uh, talk about fall and old age. They are not synonymous. A very interesting topic. So far, we have not uh, heard about much about no, geriatric medicine. So we'll be knowing more about it from him. To introduce him briefly, he is professor and head Department of Geriatrics, Sri B M Patil Medical College, Hospital and Research Center, Vijayapura. His qualifications are MD, PGDGM, MSc in Dementia. FGSI, FICP, FIACM, and FRCPE. He is adjunct faculty for medical education and faculty of and faculty also in the Tapasa Government of India Initiative. He is vice president Geriatric Society of India from 21 to 24. Uh, he has won a state award from Government of Karnataka in 2016, and he is a Commonwealth Scholar at the University of Sterling, Scotland. So this is a brief introduction of Dr. Anand. So Dr. Anand, you have about 45 minutes to talk and we'll keep 10 minutes for interaction. So over to yes, you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it's indeed a privilege uh, to be part of uh, such an organization where all the senior doctors uh, from uh, Gujarat are joining. And uh, I had a privilege that uh, I am the part of such a uh, group where the people with a lot of experience and wisdom uh, are with me. So kindly bear if I uh, do some mistakes because <clears throat> I always believe uh, in the experience uh, and the wisdom of the senior doctors uh, than uh, what I uh, talk about as evidence-based because that is uh, what matters most uh, in clinical <clears throat> scenario. And uh, I also like to thank you all for having me and uh, Dr. Nina Madam also. Uh, I think I'm missing her here. So uh, thank you for having me here. So shall I share my slides, sir? Yes, yes. I forgot to acknowledge uh, Dr. Nene's uh, no suggestion for having Dr. Anand with us. Thank you, madam. Thank you, around. Thank you madam. And uh, happy to see you all. So I bring greetings to you from uh, Sri B.M. Pachil Medical College Hospital Research Center. Uh, we are here since 2007 uh, as a geriatric clinic. We have also dementia clinic and uh, immunization clinic exclusively for senior citizens. So fall and old age, uh, is it uh, synonymous? So sir has already uh, put it as a not synonymous. Yes, fine. So after a discussion for next 40 minutes, uh, we will come to know whether it is synonymous or not. I also, uh, my memories take back 
uh, when I visited the Mahara Sayaji Rao University of Baroda uh, as a, for a speak as a lecturer in year 2010, and then now this is a second event that I am uh, presenting for the uh, audience of Baroda. So next 40 minutes, we will have a discussion on case scenarios, how the fall impacts the older person's life and the quality of life. What are the various risk factors for, uh, for causing fall in older people and how we approach and how the older person even himself can uh, prevent a fall and how what are the preventive measures. So whatever is said and done, all of us should be aware that a fall is associated with multiple causes, multiple risk factors, and we need a team approach to manage a person with falls. So it is an, a complex phenomenon that occurs in the older persons. It, one single cause does not produce falls. There are multiple risk factors add to it, and we need a team member, team members to make. Ultimately, our goal at a genetic medicine is to improve the quality of life of the older person who had injuries following falls. Now, falls are the major cause of morbidity in older population. Every older person fall need not develop injuries. Most of the older persons are very smart. Okay, I just want to know among the audience, how many of you had a fall at least in last one year and raise their hands. So see, none of them are here, uh, gentlemen had a fall. So that's what I'm telling, not all older people will fall. Not all older people who fall develop injuries. Only around 10 to 25% of the older people who fall will sustain serious injuries. We call fall in geriatric practice as a geriatric giant because it is a presenting feature of various acute illnesses. Like patient is having myocardial infarction. He will not complain of chest pain or sweating. He may present to you with a fall. I will come to that. Urinary tract infection. Patient may fall because of urinary tract infection and, uh, and not because any other cause. So fall is a very important aspect in the older person because it adversely affects the functional capacity and also impacts the quality of life. Now the falls not all falls, but few falls will lead to hospitalization. Then most of the time in 10 to 25%, it leads to immobilization. And then it keeps on iatrogenic problems in the older persons. So I again endorse that it is a multifactorial and we need a multidisciplinary team to manage a fall related injuries. And most importantly, fall can be prevented. And that is what we will em uh, emphasize today in our discussion. So we had one old man who had a fever and cough for five days. And he was brought to my clinic. He was conscious, well-oriented. His activity of daily living was good. There was no past history or no comorbidities. And he was having benign prostatic hypertrophy. His son being from a uh, well-to-do, well well-educated person. And I saw, uh, he, I saw that he had a catheter. Uh, it was at night, nine o'clock, and he had a catheter uh, lying down. And I asked, what is this? And he said, no, no, sir, I am putting the condom catheter for him. Every night I insert the condom catheter. In the morning, I remove so that he don't have to get up in the night to pee. And I said, that, that's not a good thing, that you should not do that. Uh, then he said, no, no, sir, I know everything about this. Then fine. But patient had tachycardia, he was febrile, and we managed him on the OPD basis and sent him home. But I told him, don't put on this catheter for the old man. You better go for a diapers that are the alternate available that will be better for them. And he said, nothing doing. But unfortunately, the third day, the room, uh, the home, the, the door rang the bell and the old man, without his knowledge that there is something called tube in his body and he just got up from the bed and uh, rushed to open the door. He fell, he trembled and fell and he sustained multiple injuries following which he was admitted in an intensive care unit and he succumbed to it. This was a preventable fall. Okay. There's another case scenario, what we get in our practice every day. The old man falls in the bathroom early morning at around 4.30 or 5. And his daughter-in-law notices that the old man had fallen at around 6.30, the time she wakes up. And immediately she was rushed to orthopedic OPD and X-ray was taken and fractured neck of femur was diagnosed. 
patient become breathless at 9 am and how that is how we are called to see that patient is fracture neck has breathlessness the ecg was showing acute interval medical myocardial infarction changes so that has already led to heart failure as well now the this patient tells us that it is a cardiac event that has led to fall that has caused fracture and because there is a delay in detection of almost 4 hours he has already developed the complication of the heart attack so this is how the old person presents to us by because of fall so here mm -hmm. cardiac event has led to the fall now what should be our goal whenever we come across a person who had a fall maybe a family member or as a physician manage the current issue maintain highest possible level of mobility as much as possible and modify the modifiable things in home where he had fall maybe a clutter or what we will discuss about that and our goal is to prevent another fall prevent another fall that is very very important aspect in geriatric care it is the second largest leading cause of unintentional fall in older persons across the world and older people above 60 years suffer the greatest number of fatal falls compared to the middle aged and children so this is a, a very scaring situation across the world among the older population so i again endorse that being old is not a risk for fall that is very important all of us should know but falling changes as we grow old they may make us to fall change in the gait especially in females narrow waist waddling gait or in males wide waist short stepping gait increased postural stay diminished strength of muscles maybe as the age progresses they develop sarcopenia and and environmental hazards or unexpected trip because nowadays most children are using laptop mobile chargers are thrown away in floor everywhere in the home that can even lead to a fall in the older person so what is important is all these may occur now when we see a patient who is swaying while walking we immediately advise him go for use of a cane or a stick that prevents a fall so a fall has a sensory inputs postural control musculoskeletal involvement and central processing so to cause a fall many factors are responsible for a fall so an unexpected event in which a participant comes to rest on the ground is fall but if he had a fall because of seizures or a stroke that is not considered as a fall right azila so we let us know what is a difference between a trip and a slip so this is very common in older persons so a trip happens when your foot strikes an object as i was telling you a clutter in your way a wrinkled carpet uncovered cables okay and then slips is very common in the wet or oily surface occasional spills that we don't see on the very shining floor and again uh, loose or unanchored rugs that is uh, so this is how the old person trips and slips and both lead to fall both lead to fall most of the times now older persons are so smart they don't inform their children if they had a fall and some minor injuries okay because the very next moment the person tells this son that i had a fall then son says no nothing doing no more walking you will not go out for the walking they restrict their activity so the older persons don't repeat don't inform their children falls are very costly i'll tell you falls management is very very costly it not only leads to loss of physical function but also leads to independence and i have seen many daughter in laws and daughters have left their job only to provide care for their grandparents or their in-laws following fall and surgery and 40% of the hospital admissions are because of falls and post discharge again within 15 days or one month he falls again in a home right so function and quality of life are affected in the older person there is a loss of confidence once the old man falls he feels that i am am i going to fall again fear of another fall there is a lot of confidence fear confidence in him he stops going for the shopping he stops going for a morning walk that is how the falls one episode of fall impacts on the quality of life of the older people and a quarter of people will break another bone within 5 years so that is how the this cycle of 
of uh, uh, fouls and injuries goes on. Then how it differs? A uh, young person, when they walk and trip or slip, they fall in the front. So most of the time, they develop injuries over the wrist. Most of the police fracture are common in the fall in middle age, whereas fracture neck femur and fracture spine are common in old age because this is how they fall. So that is the difference between the fall among the youngsters and among the older people. And where they fall, any, any place, anywhere, wherever they are walking, it may be home, it may be a hospital. Nowadays, during marriage season, every week I see one patient had a history of fall because there is a lot of water slipping on the floor and most of the time they don't see garden, food, for bedroom, everywhere they can fall. I'll just show you uh, what are the common bones and how the persons come to us, uh, older person comes to us. This lady, uh, this patient had already a hip fracture four years back, operated, and now again he had a fall and he has developed a fracture on the uh, right uh, hips. And this is a patient who had come with the fracture uh, of the vertebral bodies. So these are the serious uh, thing that happens and it tells us that patient is having the process of osteoporosis. And this again has severe pain. Fracture vertebral body causes a lot of pain and that has an impact on the uh, patient's uh, quality of life. So what are the causes? It is a mnemonic phase, inflammation of joints, hypotension, especially orthostatic hypotension, auditory and visual abnormalities. Those who have poor vision are likely to fall. Patients with Parkinsonism, patients who are having foot problems, their cardiac issues, leg length discrepancy, illnesses like myocardial infarction, uretic infection can lead to fall. Okay, the fall is a presenting feature of heart attack and uretic infection. Poor nutrition, weight loss, sarcopenia, and gait disturbance. All these can lead to fall in the older persons. Most of the time, the older persons we come across is because of multiple antihypertensives that they're taking. So when they are prescribed more than three antihypertensives, we should always keep a watch on orthostatic hypotension. Otherwise, they are likely to fall. So why we call fall as a geriatric giant? Because myocardial infarction, pneumonia, lung infection, urinary tract infection, acute confusional state, all can present to you with the fall. So fall is basically not the direct reason for musculoskeletal disease. It, these are the diseases which can lead to fall in the older persons. So what are the, again the risk factors? Patients are taking more medicines, hypoglycemia. We get at least one patient every month who had an hypoglycemia and fall in the bathroom. Urinary incontinence. People have a lot of uh, urge to pass urine frequently. Nocturia, polyuria, snoring. People who are habit of snoring in the night, they won't be knowing. Their better half will be knowing who is snoring more. So they are likely to fall in the uh, in the uh, day hours. More medicines. Constipation is one of the, again, risk factor for uh, falls in the bathroom. They strain for the stools for the long time, maybe 30 minutes or 40 minutes. And when they get up, they develop syncopal episodes and fall in the bathroom. This was another case where we are called as a home visit. The couple was staying in the home. Husband had had a fall in the bathroom. The wife got scared. I don't know what to do. Just we got a call. And when we went home, that was what we saw was a right leg was smaller than the left leg, as we tell, external rotation. And patient was unable to move. And we immediately shifted to the ambulance to the hospital for further management. So always the older person should be asked, did you had a fall in last one year? Yes, that is very, very important. That itself is a risk factor for another fall in subsequent years. And if the patient had a person had a fall twice in last six months, he needs to be evaluated comprehensively. That is where he should be referred to a geriatrician. And always look for the medicines that taking. In my practice, we come across a lot of people where new CNS drugs are added, like especially gabapentin, pregabalin. Very next day, they come with giddiness and fall. So that also has to be taken care in when the older person. So when a new CNS drug is added, we should think that is. And most importantly, the elder abuse. We can't ignore this. Most older persons, they being abused. They are being uh, had repeated falls. You would evaluate them, no cause found. But this is a lady who came to us and she was totally uh, deaf. And she had a fall and injury. 
and uh, their history was the daughter in law said she just fell in the bathroom and we brought her here and once the daughter in law left the old lady was telling she pushed me she pushed me so that is how the it happens in the even the home the older persons are physically abused and they can come to you with uh, multiple issues so it is we have to consider social issues as well so most of the older people they fall and they forget that they had a fall or they don't want to report it to the children so after 15 days they start having swaying or loss of urine control then they have developed a subdural hematoma so again that we have to ask whether did you had a fall in the past so what should be done when the older person falls we look for whether there is a difficulty in balance or walking is there a orthostatic hypotension record blood pressure both sitting and standing we do a simple test called get up go test so what is that we make the patient get up from the chair actually the chair should have both the handles of that and he should get up from the chair walk around for 10 feet come back and sit on the chair it should not take more than 12 seconds if he takes more than 12 seconds he has a chance of falling in the near future also the dual task this is a very important concept in identifying the older people are having dual task when we go for a walk when you two people are going for a walk and suddenly one another person comes from by side of you and he start talking you will stop turn your head turn your body and then start talking to him and again you start step this is where is the problem is that you are not able to handle a dual task means you can't you are walking and you are talking with the other colleagues if that is there then you are likely to fall but another test we don't recommend in the very old persons that you can go for this rikshasana the tree pose and if you can stand with this for 10 minutes 10 seconds without any balance then he is less likely that he is going to fall so then again we also look for cognition test if he has got early dementia early forgetfulness he is likely to fall in the near future so these are the test we do in the older persons again simple thing try to bend down and reach tell the old person to bend down and just pick up the object if he can do that without losing balance then his musculoskeletal system and cognition is very good if he loses balance in doing this he is likely to fall in near future so that is what we uh, assess in the older person so what we do in the functional capacity and assessment of the functional capacity in a older person the older persons who are healthier who are moving around who have very excellent uh, uh, habits of going outside moving taking uh, shopping and all doing all those things they usually fall on the stairs away from the home and during activities like reading and uh, bending and reaching and this is a injury which is serious whereas functionally limited people who are only home bound they don't go outside they will only be in the home so they do fall in their routine activities and uh, they may uh, uh, sustain minor injuries so what to do when a person falls when you come across a person who had a fall look for whether the old person is alert did he had a sweating may it's a may suggest a heart attack or a low sugar level did he had a tongue bite that's a seizures shortening of the limb yes there is a fracture if he has a head injury bleed stop by pressure and arrange for refer, transfer to the hospital so always ask did he had a chest pain tell him to move all the limbs if not able to do then suspect fracture and look for the pain so this is an uh, a photograph given by uh, in uh, society of singapore aging society of singapore that if a person had a fall what he is supposed to do so he has to just crawl towards a chair or a support which is there in the room and uh, pressure on the normal foot which a non injured foot and try to climb over the chair and sit there and make the noise or give a call to your neighbor or to your family patient persons that they are with them now coming to the most important aspect how to prevent a fall we we just published this article uh, in the aging issues and response by uh, in, a, uh, in a journal 
Springer. So we will discuss now how to prevent a fall. So, so far, what we understood is the fall is a complex phenomenon, how it impacts quality of life and how to assess a person who had fall and how to assist a person who had a fall. Now, coming to safety measures. So what we do in our hospital is we put a cushion bed by the side of the cot for all the older persons admitted so that in the night hours, even if they fall, they should not sustain injuries. Never use these ruggers. If you have got in the home, just remove them because any old person is likely to fall because of this. We can may strip uh, because of he may trip. Always provide supports near the toilets like this and use the non-skid floor in the home to prevent a fall. Whenever the person gets up from the commode for sitting long time or straining, he should need a support to hold. So please provide such supports in the if you have got older persons in the home and also treat the constipation as well. So you can even put such uh, handles just by the side of wash basins and even in the toilets so that they find a support when they feel giddy they find a support to hold something and this is very important nowadays most of the floorings are done which are shiny uh, and uh, you know uh, they even if a spill of water is there is not seen and most of the older people fall on such floors which we see common in the marriage halls and in the halls <laughs> when you use the bed rails always ensure that it should cover only one third of the pot. It should not be a full bed rail. This should help him to hold and get down. It should support him rather than putting it the full uh, pledge. So that is what the scientific evidence says. Nowadays, we have got a socks which has a unequal of uh, this one uh, with the branding. So it will prevent slips in the bathroom. So these are the socks which are very economical and easily available in the market that can be used by the older person, especially during the winter season. And they can even, uh, they, they don't slip in the toilet. There are hip protectors available for the older people. They can put it in the undergarments by the side and they walk. So when even if he falls, there is a very less impact on the bone and less chances that he will develop a fracture. So, but most of the older people are not comfortable with these hip protectors and, but some people use, some don't use depending upon them. Now, other preventive measures are always keep lights on in the bathroom throughout the night. So sometimes we rush to the bathroom, we try to struggle to find the buttons in the, in the sleeping mood. So always keep lights on in the bathroom that prevents a lot of falls. Rubber mats in the bathroom, that also prevents falls. And older people here, whenever you are meeting your friends, wherever you are, don't stand for the long time. You are likely to fall after some time because of orthostatic hypertension or a syncopal episode. In most of the marriages where I go, when I see the grandparents are standing next to their grandson's marriage, I keep telling them, put a chair and sit. You don't have to stand for four hours or five hours, otherwise you will fall. So orthostatic hypotension, if the person is having, we have to change the medicines. And second is we have to train the person whenever he gets up from the bed, <clears throat> stand for at least 10 to 15 seconds and then start walking. That will prevent a fall in the older persons. Some of older persons are very fond of the same slippers that they're using for five years or 10 years. They don't want to change. I don't know what attachment they develop for that. These are the, again, loose slippers lead to fall. And bifocal lens, whenever, uh, it, what is suggested is always have two sets of glasses. One is for the distance and one near, because this again is a risk factor for the falls in the older persons, especially when you are climbing down. The so older people are more at risk when they are climbing down. They, are, they can fall more when they climb down than they climb up. So we always recommend that when up, use the stairs, went down, go by escalator or the lift. So this prevents falls in older person. And dhoti, which is a traditional wear in this part of Karnataka and Maharashtra, this is also one of the risk factor for fall in the older persons. 
never ever try to stand on the stool and do some activities in the home i request all the older persons here and if your grandparents are there please tell them not to do this such uh, on the stools and always place the items which are easily uh, reachable and take. never take your pets for in a morning walk this again leads to falls in the older persons and always put colors in the staircase this is what i had done in my home also top and bottom we try to put one color so that we will come to know that this is a start this is and there is a landing again start and end so always it should be and the whole of the flooring or steps should be away from clutters there should no be clutters and they should have a handles as well in most of the countries uh, uh, people are afraid of older persons being fall in the hospitals though they are tying on the bed which should not be practiced. Uh, this is a, a photograph from the Washington Post that the older people are in the uh, hospitals in USA. They are being tied to the bed only to sure, make sure that they should not fall. But that is not the right practice. We should always try to find the cause for the fall and prevent. We get many patients who are having uncontrolled diabetes or newly detected benign prostatic hypertrophy or they have got habit of drinking more water in the night. So they have to get up frequently for passing urine. So that leads to disturbed sleep and that is one of the risk factors for fall. So what we recommend them is till you your problem is solved, your problem is solved of passing more urine in the night, keep a wide mouth bucket next to your bed in the night hours, the old bucket you can keep next to bucket. When you get an urge to pee, pee it in the night in the bucket, close it and go back to bed. Pee, go good. And then in the morning, you can clean the bucket and keep it back. So this will prevent falls and false related injuries in the older persons. And once the problem of BPH is controlled or sugar is controlled, then you can stop this practice. This is just a small video uh, which has been made viral recently showing a old man uh, see, this is how he is climbing and doing the things. I just told you not to do these things for by the older persons because this is a little scary. I, I'll just not show you the complete video uh, because see, this is how he, he lose balances and he will fall. So that should not happen with the older persons. So we recommend walking with a cane and the cane should be used on the good side of the uh, body and you should move along with the board. This is the old man who had come to us with the, he is comfortable with these two canes. And he said that I don't sleep because I work in my field and we don't have tiles like this. I'm comfortable with these two canes, but he is not using in the right way. What is the right way of using a stick or a cane? The height of the cane should be at your wrist level. It should not be too tall or it should not be too short. Okay, this in this person we see that they are too short. So he has to bend. So if you keep the height of the stick at the level of your wrist, that is the right way of using the cane. So we had one lady uh, who uh, was had a urge to, had a risk for fall. Okay, so what happened was I recommended him that get a stick for your mother. So he brought one stick. And after one week, when she came for follow-up, she was not using this stick. I told him, get a better one. So maybe your mother is so fashionable that she may not use so he got one another costlier stick. Again, she was refusing to use this stick. After 15 days, she came and I asked, are you using the stick? Where is the stick? We didn't bring the stick. He said, no, no, I'm, I, I'm not used to that old. And I asked, what is that you want? You tell your son. She said politely that, see, I want something new stick. These are available in market. These are foldable sticks. I can keep in my purse. And whenever I feel giddy, I want to use it and I want to keep it back. But that doesn't serve the purpose. Now, what I want to tell you is the you and the female, older females are very fond of, you know, uh, fancy sticks. Understand? But she needs to use it regularly, uh, not that when she feels giddy, right? So in all the older persons, we request to sit down. We tell them to sit down when you are wearing shoes, when you are having bath, when you are wearing clothes following bath. And whenever you are traveling, don't go and stand near the exit doors. You sit there for a long time. This will prevent falls and falls related injuries in the older person if they just follow these basic things in day-to-day -day life. So coming to the exercise, yes, walking is the best exercise. 
yoga has its own benefits but what is more important is strength and balance exercise are more beneficial in preventing a fall in the older person now coming to the digital era there are many sensors available in the market uh, this is a one sensor which predicts the fall which informs the person your son or your daughter that the person had fall in the home the good thing about this sensor is it doesn't have a camera so you can place it in the bathroom you can place it in the bedroom and it will sense that you had a fall it sends a message to your children's wherever they are in the place just it cost it needs a 24 hours wi-fi and it just cost to 50 dollars and there is another sensor that you have to just wear around the neck and whenever the old man falls he had to just press the button so, so most of the times uh, when the person falls he himself is in so much of problem and he may not aware that there is something called I have to press but still it is good you can just press the message goes to the uh, family member that he had a fall now coming to role of vitamin d so vitamin d supplementations will not prevent fall only it reduces the chances of injury following fall so Prophylactic supplementation of calcium and vitamin D will not help the older persons for getting uh, preventing a fall. Okay, so that is the message we have to take. Just a supplementation of vitamin D. In fact, it is found in one of the study that it increases the incidence of fall. So avoid unnecessarily taking of vitamin D and calcium supplementations just to prevent a fall. There is an app available uh, on your phones that is called Nimble app. It will make you active, it will make you exercise, it will make you stretch exercise for every 10 minutes a day and it will make a recording in your app and you can see how it, you are being doing, how much you are walking, how much mental exercise, how much sit ups, stand ups you are doing and how many steps you have put. Everything will be shown in the this app and it helps you to tell that whether you are doing, your activities are doing perfectly or not. And this is one of the stick that is available. I, I think many of you are aware that this is a stick available in the market now, uh, which is very sturdy. And uh, it has even the uh, very sturdy. It has a light. It is adjustable. It has a light in this. Even if you are working the night, uh, you can watch on the camera, uh, on the light in this. And if you have fall, you have an emergency button. You can just press, it makes noise like a siren. If you are sitting alone and if you want to hear some songs, it has even FM. So these sticks are now available in the market. So the older persons can have this and then they can uh, utilize this stick for multi-purpose stick they can use. Now uh, coming to the senior friendly facilities, what we have done in our hospital we have an even landing out of the hospital where the older persons coming on two wheeler or auto rickshaw, they can just uh, stand at the level of the uh, road and they climb, they come to this uh, uh, ramp and we have placed the uh, tubes uh, across the hospital. So the person who wants to walk and they have support uh, to get uh, with the rails across the hospital, they have rails. And we have placed a low bed pot for all the older persons in our OPD that will help them to sit and uh, they don't have to climb the table and all those things. We also have a uh, wheelchair uh, uh, that is that you can make any positions. You can make it flat. You can make it 45 degree. And there is also a commode uh, table for this. And you can even take ECGs making the patient lie on this. So to conclude, not all older people fall and the best predictor for an increased risk of fall is a past history of fall. If he had already a past history fall in the past, he is likely to fall. And in the older people here, I request not to ignore mild symptoms. Please consult a doctor. You just don't blame it on the age. I am going to have giddiness. I am going to fall. No. So that is not the part, it is not synonymous with old age. Not all older people will fall. And even if they fall, not all will develop serious injuries. And once they develop serious injuries, it has a negative impact on their life. So just to end that a good patient, the one patient telling that I don't want to inform my doctor that I had a fall, but I lose my independence. 
but the smart patient says no no i want to tell to my doctor because he will give guide me in so many ways and prevent another fall so that is the difference between a good and a bad patient so just to conclude so it is said that boy falls to standing young falls to low and elderly falls to fracture so thank you very much for your patience hearing and now the topic is open for question and answers i think i am on time so thank, thank you, you dr so anand you finished well in time not only well in time but it was wonderful journey of knowing about no how to prevent fall and what can happen if you fall so wonderful uh, and now we are open for any question and uh, questions uh, discussion comments etc my first question is dr anand about uh, no uh, no older people living in a house where there are multiple levels of steps they build the house uh, you know when they were yeah, young yeah. but now they realize that there are multiple levels of step should they move to other house uh instead of, yes sir if they are not able to climb the stairs at least they can shift to the rooms that are in the ground floor right usually the rooms in the ground floor are for children and then they so they shift the room from a top floor to the ground floor and if you have got multiple steps it is always a risk for fall so now open to others to us yes dr jagdish bhai yes uh, see congratulations that you have a geriatric clinic thank you sir thank in, you so much in city of baroda i don't think we have a separate geriatric clinic which is a need for the society yes sir <laughs> so uh, another thing activity of daily living yes. should be given as a training to all old people and they should be categorized that all the following activities should be taught to all the elderly people activity of daily living that will make their life easy and prevent the falls sir so, i'll do it sir we'll do it <laughs> yes, ambali sir, sir ambali yes, sir, sir that was an excellent excellent talk as usual Thank you, uh, sir. Is Thank you, an expert. Yes, wonderful. Uh, he has great insight, and he always. Uh, I mean, he explains everything so practically. All those suggestions and tips of yours were great, and uh, we will also remember them when we Thank are uh, teaching or training the patients. And one simple thing, uh, one more thing, which we have to tell the patients is not to rush. Most of the times, uh, they fall because they rush, as you mentioned. like oh, for opening the door or because they have to yes. go to the bathroom and other uh, activities so if they don't rush a fall may be prevented to a large extent but the yes, uh, lecture was wonderful sir thank you very much i am happy so i attended yes thank you so much ma'am sure yes can i can i say something yes, yes, yes sir yes. please sir please please uh, you see you are telling us some help uh, tips for uh, safe walking and things like that now can you elaborate on how you manage while climbing the stairs or getting down the stairs climbing up the stair is safe for the older persons you can climb step by step you first put the good step and then put another step by the side and you can climb slowly up the stair but never try to get down from the stairs because that is the one major risk factor for fall in the older person so you want if there is no option if there is no option to getting down as a lift or staircase it is uh, you should be very very cautious don't use those bifocal glasses if you are using while getting down let the glasses you are be off the glasses and slowly and politely try to get down but that should not be your daily affairs that should not be your daily affairs so you are likely to fall uh, if you use the uh, bifocal lens while getting down and second again put the weak step down and then the good step down so politely and you can you even use the cane sir you can even use the cane while take the support one hand with the rail and one with the cane slowly you get down while getting down you are likely to stoop that is another risk factor for fall so use the cane that will help you maintain your balance and come slowly step by step you come down slowly there is no hurry to get down but as much as possible please avoid climbing stairs and getting down in your even in your own home as well 
थैंक यू डॉक्टर एंड जस्ट एन अदर एडिशन आप एंड करे मैं बुढ़ा हो गया बोल के वो मैं सब दोस्तों को बोलता हूँ मैं बुढ़ा नहीं हो गया मेरी उम्र हो रही है so age is just a number sir it is again your quality of life and your willingness to participate has kept to ang ang by heart so hello <laughs> Hi, yes doctor hello yes doctor hemant yes how can, can we join the paroda club sir hello doctor hemant sir can we join the paroda club sir doctor dolly please wait uh, doctor hemant sir please come as a person who is an adventurous sports lover who has fallen twice From mountains to ordinary staircase, my hints are following. Number one, get proper sunlight over your exposed fatty areas or old people. Number one, that will give you adequate vitamin D and no overdose. Number two, even while you are sleeping, do straight leg raising test. Twenty second, hold up your quadriceps and keep eyes up. Yes. agreed sir uh, we just lost your connection you are right sir a uh, simple exposure to sun we all know that it gives a vitamin d at least in morning 10 30 11 we just walk around for 10 15 minutes uh, in the sun and we get lot of vitamin d and uh, you as you complete yes sir you are off month your voice please continue sir please continue complete hemant your connection please. unstable uh, go ahead yeah. sir there are anti skid are you are anti skid anti skid of socks his yeah. connection is unstable i can't dr hemant you are cutting out yeah. anyway is, is there any other question we can take up few more questions so point is yeah. hello am i connected my simple point is very important point is Can I, am I audible? Yes, yes sir. Ah, huh. my simple point is three very important only brief point. Anti skid three M T. Thank you. No, we can't hear you. Three hmm. cycles. Yeah, his connection is unstable. so somebody was asking about you no know, saturday club uh, you can note down my number i will add you in the group so that you can get all uh, notifications for saturday club morning meetings but essentially the link remains same every saturday 8am we have this meeting so you can note down my number or i'll write it down in the chat box you can uh, copy from that i will share to madam sir i'll share yeah, your number okay, to please do that yes please. sir yeah thank you sir thank mm. you so much sir yes sir. thanks she is a practitioner uh, practitioner in delhi and uh, dr mangala is an uh, past uh, head of department of geriatric medicine in aurangabad government medical college aurangabad so can i yes sir dr hemant sir please continue yes you can continue anti skid pm anti skid pm tapes okay anti skid pm tapes are very important to prevent fall railings all over are very important and there are vibram shoes And floats bata anti skid sleeper plus what you said about anti skid bathroom uh, uh, this thing. So first my request is there are lot of measures which which I want to add that after the fall how I recovered after proper physiotherapy and we can prevent lot of falls. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aman, for those comments. Any other comment or question? Yes, there was a question in the chat box regarding how does high dose vitamin D would increase the incidence of fall. Yes, sir. Uh, there are the studies, a lot of studies that tell even uh, we don't recommend uh, uh, vitamin D supplementations and even calcium supplementation to all persons unless they have. <clears throat> This was the last study which they mentioned that high doses of vitamin D supplementation, almost sixty thousand units per month. has in fact led to, that was a study they they have done in large number of population they have found that they were the people who had more falls than those who were not given uh, the fall so they came to the conclusion that just supplementing vitamin d will not protect you from the fall 
but how the mechanism uh, they, they are not mentioned that studies an observation yes, sir uh, yes yes sir. yes sir. i please think it is an observation only hmm. yes sir please go ahead uh, uh, yes, sir. So it is a wonderful journey we come across with several problems related to fall and all that. So age-old persons, you know, they have uh, problems like uh, hearing and also the eye. In coming uh, uh, weeks, you know, it is better if you address uh, uh, each and every problem usually the elders will face. So today is a wonderful talk wherein we have to take care of ourselves. You know, a lot of... Uh, you know, the care and other uh, safety measurements have been discussed. Thank you, Dr. Nambli, sir, for uh, giving a nice presentation. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Like Dr. Venkates has echoed my feelings because, you know, the population of Saturday Club is part of the old age. So, we want to forward to a lot of things that we wouldn't like to know about. But I need to, you know, appreciate Dr. Anand here because... 8 a.m. was not the right time for him. His, his OPD starts very early. Dr. Sachin, please mute. I agree to this timing. So thank you so please. much. Thank you, sir. It was a privilege, sir, to be with your uh, this one, Baroda branch. And I'm really overhand with that. Thank you. Uh, sir, thank you so much. It was a wonderful session. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Sachin. Namaste. Any other comment, question? Even a single fall in a hospital management can lead to closure of the hospital according to NABA criteria. Right. Agreed, sir. I agree with you. In a fall, a delirium in the hospital, post of a delirium, also all are considered negative marks uh, for NABA accreditation. And that's why in the USA, fall in hospital is considered um, uh, you know, negative marks. That's why they tie them. That's why they showed the photograph. So I agree with you, sir. Another, and that should another uh, should... aspect. Another aspect is sleep. Yes. Sleep apnea and mouth breathing are the main causes where why the elderly get a lot of uh, thirst. He gets up and drinks water and then falls. So taping the mouth with a simple three M tape you know, can lead to not dry mouth and he cannot get, uh, an uh, elderly gets up, drink more water and has a bathroom fall at night. So simple taping of the mouth by a simple mouth, uh, to avoid a mouth breathing. There are a lot of things, the root cause should be analyzed medically as well as physiotherapy and occupational therapy and diet and nutrition and vitamin D overdose happens because of Chemical vitamin D. If you take a normal sunlight early in the morning, you have a fatty part of the abdomen that gives adequate vitamin D. Yes, sir. Yeah, doctor, can I go ahead? Yes, please. Yes, sir, please. I'm Mohammed Sirajuddin from Hyderabad, uh, from Dabara, uh, Madam Matin Ma'am's uh, group. I just wanted to have some guidance if the older people fall in the room, bedroom, and uh, because they are very bulky uh, weight and also, uh, what are the measures that we can uh, hold them up besides uh, two or three persons helping? Anything other, other tool is there, how they can get up? Because I found it difficult in my mother's case. Uh, that's the thing. Sir, uh, yes, sir. Uh, it's the uh, obese persons or morbid obese patients. Uh, you get a mm -hmm. lot of difficulty in shifting them from the bed and all. Now, hydraulic-based wheelchairs are available. So you have to just uh, take the wheelchair near the bed and the, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the sheet goes into the bed. She has to just sit on the hydraulic set and it pulls it back to the wheelchair. Uh, though they are a little costly, but uh, that will be benefit, definitely benefit that without even lifting uh, her to the chair, she has to just sit on the hydraulic sheet that comes on the bed and it, it, she can go and sit on the wheelchair and on you can move the wheelchair to the restroom or, or even to the dining room. So hydraulic based wheelchairs are available. And uh, if she still can able to walk, ensure that there are railings across your home. So that will help them to walk around with the support. Uh, no, no, I, I got a point, doctor. But uh, the thing is, uh, in the open room, everywhere you cannot uh, put the railing. So in the center of the rooms, uh, sometimes, you know, they walk and they sleep there. So from that place, how uh, they should get up or uh, what are the tools? Uh, because maybe the bed is near, 
but it's very difficult to hold and get up. So besides uh, uh, having two three people that holding that, doctor, the simplest way is a rope from the roof with a knot. When she is alone, also if the rope is hanging above her at two three points, crucial points in her room, she can on her own take the rope and get her get up. And the rope, uh, which doctor has said. What sir Our is Lord telling, Lord. Dr. Heyman sir is telling is to put ropes uh, that is practiced in most of the places. I, I think you must have also put already. So I put the ropes so that they can hold know. and try to get up. But that is uh, only to get up from the bed. Now your issue is from bed to down. They are on the floor. Uh, they are already yes, fallen right on, on the, the floor. floor. So, yeah. so what I Dr. Had Heyman sir was... I had called two people, you know, to hold from both the sides. And because again, you know, the, the person who is uh, single-handedly handling... He may have some other type of injury or slip disease or anything else. So is that? I, I think there is no other way, right? So you think wheelchair, sir. You can support with wheelchair and uh, move them on that. And even now, wheelchairs are coming with uh, multiple holes in the seat. Even if they can sit and bath them, no, no mm -hmm. more water collection on the chair. It just goes down uh, on the wheelchair itself. And wheelchair has a commode system. So sitting there also, they can pee and shit. And the uh, collection is getting down, and you can be cleaned and again placed back. So no, no, that is there already. That is there already. No, no, I have already. Uh, it has already been followed. I am. I am just asking a person for. He has already fallen, or he like my mother had fallen. So how she has to get up? Yes, sir. The support. It, I mean, it's about yeah. lifting a person who has already lifting fallen. Person, and yeah, fallen on the floor. Way. He is heavy weight. I think you you need to have a stretcher like thing where three four people <laughs> do it. Otherwise, yeah, so again, you are two people, right? Yeah, problem. definitely, definitely you need people. Exactly. There is a technique to lift that person. You hmm. put in a cloth like a dhoti under it. One or two, and two persons from two sides can lift that up, dhoti up, and okay. the minimum support and the physique that is the liver system. You can lift okay. up because I have done that with my father. Okay, that's right. Me. That's a good idea, doctor. That's a good and idea. And you see my photograph. You see, everywhere, yeah. everywhere, I have put these 3M tapes. Yes, sir. And railings. Okay. And so identify the steps. These railings and 3M tapes, anti skid are must everywhere where the skidding charges are there. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a good suggestion. Sir has already an ideal home to prevent fall. Yes. <laughs> so he has already made so many changes since. <laughs> That's good, good sir. No person so, who falls will prevent. <laughs> you will not believe I went to America. I, I was on blood thinner. I made a special pediatric type of helmet of soft dishing so that I don't get brain hemorrhage after a simple fall and complicate the matter for the family. So prevention, what you are expect today is the most important talk for uh, geriatrics and it depends on the care and the open mind of the physician and caregiver. And it starts with physiotherapy, diet and occupational therapy. And so, orthotics and prosthetics. Yes, so, sir. You, for those you, last you can see my bathroom. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I, I just want to show you my bathroom. I modified in this manner just to hold it from here. And right now I've just so removed the antiquated, uh, you know, carpet which was there. And this is this railing. And here yes, it is. Sir. Yes. So the best thing I could do, and then from here they can get up. So that's a very short distance. So by holding this, they can get up. Right. So I'll not put the side ones. That's good. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that uh, facility that you created. But the yeah. fact that now uh, we have reached the time. Time is up now. It's already nine o'clock. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot, doctor. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, so Quality last few too. last few comments here. Uh, those who want to you know watch this video again or the past videos, it's available on YouTube channel of Saturday Club of Baroda. You can just type Saturday Club of Baroda and you will have about 126 such stocks which are already archived there. So you are welcome to join all Saturday Club morning meetings. I will share uh, my number with uh, Dr. Anand knows my number so he can share it with his group and I can add uh, people who are interested in our group so that they can get weekly notification for such talks. And another thing which I wanted to request Dr. Anand was that you know many such uh, geriatric uh, experts in our country. So we look forward to more such talks uh, from other people also in the same uh, you know, field of geriatric medicines. Sure, so, sir. I'll be in touch with you. Yeah. Thank you for the wonderful thank talk. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much for this opportunity.
and uh, yes. thanks to dr and mrs nene also for introducing yes. you to saturday club of baroda thank you all uh, we end the session here and we meet next saturday morning thanks a lot doctor thank, thank you. you sir thank you very much have a good thank day thank you thank you